What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO. If you are at the, what is it, the Memphis Regional Championships, hope you, hopefully you are doing well. I just got paired against Seagrove. We are playing Zorark Like a Rock, which is a brave move for me because I am not exactly the best Zorark Like a Rock player, but that's fine. I mean, you can't get good at anything without practicing, so I am going to be working on this this year. Definitely need to be touching up my Zorark plays, getting a little bit better at this deck. From what I've heard, uh, reports from my friends who are at the Memphis Regional Championships, apparently a little bit of everything is doing well, and uh, that's what I would have predicted. I think that the meta just seems very wide open right now. I've been saying this for you know months, just play your favorite deck because I think that's the honest to goodness truth is just play the deck that you like the best, play the deck that you feel the most comfortable with and that you think that you'll pilot the most optimally. And that is just uh, the best you can do in this format, honestly. Just it's, uh, you know, I don't think any deck really powers over any other deck. I just heard that uh, my friend Jimmy Pendarvis might be losing his win and in today too to a Steelix deck. A Steelix deck. So, uh, R.I.P. to Jimmy. There, that is a that is a rough go at it. Can't really uh, account for Steelix decks. I mean, usually when you when you build the deck, I mean, yeah, you can't always account for mill decks. A deck like Zorark, like Rock, is just gonna lose to a mill deck uh, more than likely. That's kind of just the way it goes. Looks like Seagrove is piloting a Solgaleo deck here. So that is very interesting. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. I'm definitely not going to need that weakness policy. I'm probably also not going to need, uh, let's, let's skip on the choice band for right away. I could ditch the Lycan Rock and just say like, we probably won't use that for a couple turns, but I actually like the Lycan Rock as well. Let's get rid of the, the Guzma is going to help get me out of the active position. Let's get rid of that. So we're going to do that. We're going to get ourselves a Zerua here. And then we're pretty much just going to Lily 4-5 here. And we're going to hope that we draw some good ones. We did not. Okay. So thus is the life of a Zorark uh, Lycanroc deck. Sometimes you draw hands like this. I think uh, it's a little bit of a bold play to go double fighting energy on the active Tapu Lele. But honestly, it's not that bold. Uh... I'll be able to attack next turn, that's fine, and maybe I can, you know, maybe I can uh, multi-switch or something like that. So I think that I give myself the opportunity if I have it. My opponent's probably getting a turn to Soul Burst GX, and I'm going to be sitting here with one Zorark wondering what am I doing with my life, why have I chosen this deck, I promised I would never play Zorark decks, <laughs> and here we go. We are going to get just stomped out by a Solgaleo GX deck with lightning energy in it. I don't even know what in the world that could possibly be for. I, I honestly just have no idea. So that's interesting. Hopefully Seagrove will show off his spicy little tech there. The lightning energy, why the lightning energy in the in the Solgaleo deck? There must be some Pokemon in this deck that uses lightning energy. Maybe Manetric? Maybe it's Manetric Solgaleo? That seems like it honestly doing too much, if you ask me. But uh, you never know. So we would hit this thing for like 100 right now if we went double fighting. I don't actually like terribly mind that. I think it softens it up, and then I could potentially do 150 next turn. So we're just going to, yeah, we're going in here. We're going to Cynthia and try to get out of that ugly hand. Uh, and sure enough, here we are, and things are looking bad. Okay, let's get, uh, obviously we know that Zeru is going down. I want to keep the choice band. The Devoured Field is probably the weakest link in this hand. Let's trade that and then see what we get. Oh, lordy. Okay, uh, I think I am going to bench this Diancie as well, and we are just going to go in and hit this thing for as much as we can. And then next turn, I just have a Judge. That's all I have. I have a Judge to try and pull out of this uh, with a Choice Band and a DCE for my Zorark GX. That is brutal. Now, fortunately, uh, let's see, I could do 150. That's more than enough to knock this thing out. 
However, if I only get, let's see, if I only get four bench Pokemon, then I'm doing two, what, 130? So actually with the double choice band there, that does help my math a little bit. I only need four bench Pokemon next turn, which is gonna be good because I'm only starting out with two benched Pokemon. My opponent decides to evolve into the non-GX Solgaleo, which is interesting because uh, I guess this thing can knock out Lele, which would be a big play. And if my opponent comes in and knocks out Lele with this, uh, yes, that is very bad for me. Obviously, we want to take out that Solgaleo over there, but he would much rather save that Solgaleo for a, uh, a Zorark, right? So this is miserable. I mean, Zorark versus Solgaleo, this is like just a miserable matchup. I don't think that there's any other way to cut it up. Like, we're just gonna lose here. There's nothing to be done about it. I don't know why I attached that choice ban. I should have saved the choice ban. I'm just, I think I'm just so tilted sideways that we just uh, are out here grasping at whatever we can get our hands on. So let's trade. Uh, let's just trade away that. I think the pal pad. I think we kind of want the stadium here. Uh, alrighty then. Yep. We're just doing two, four, six, eight, ninety damage to this thing. You know what, Seagrove? I mean, I think you pretty much got it, man. I don't think I can really do anything. This is just uh, this is just slaughter. It's ugly. Now you just you know, throw this Solgaleo in the active. You can manually attach to this Cosmoeme. It's just, uh, you know, I, I, ain't, I ain't got time for this, honestly. Well played. You 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 got it there, sir. I'm out. I'm out. Let's go. Nope. This is this is bad. Yup. We out of here. Goodbye. All right. We're going to try again with the Zorark Lycanroc, and uh, we're probably going to be showing off why I just, uh, I just can't with this deck, but uh, we're going to try again and see if we can maybe get a little bit more of a stable uh, board position here. Maybe get a Lycanroc into play. Maybe even get more than one Zorark in play. Maybe not get blown up by massive Solgaleo's turn two. Let's see here. All right. So we have got ourselves a very formidable starting hand. I'm okay with this. All right. This is looking good. We got ourselves two rock rough, a nest ball, a lily. What more could we possibly want? We've even got a DCE in our hand. Maybe we are going to be the ones getting the turn two dangerous rogue and actually teeing off this game. That would be fantastic. My opponent starts with Tapu Koko. This is probably some sort of weird spread deck uh, that I don't feel like dealing with, but uh, that's fine. We could probably start claw slashing unless they have got something weird in store like, uh, yeah, well, we do have claw slash. We just have absolutely nothing else. Okay, so your go, my guy. Unless they've got enhanced hammers and the such, in which case we are just gonna scoop it up Again, uh, that would just be bad if my opponent just goes enhanced hammer flying flip. I just, uh, oh my gosh, that'd be horrible. I think I'd probably have to attach basic fighting, hope that sticks, and then go, you know, next turn. This is a Passimian deck. Oh boy. All right. So we've got pretty much the ideal start to deal with a Passimian deck, assuming my opponent does not knock out my Rock Rough turn one, which absolutely can happen. They only need to get two more benched Passimian and this thing is done for. So after the acro bikes and the nest balls and all that, they can find themselves two Passimian here. Brooklet Hill maybe, there's one. They just need one more if it's in hand. They got to turn one knockout on my rock rough. Super lame, uh, that's just uh, that's bad news. Come on, don't have it, just thank goodness. All right, so we survived narrowly but we did and we even got a cynthia thank goodness all right so we're just gonna do this uh we are not new we are not doing that we are just going to attach here gonna save my other one for i don't know just in case and we're going to cynthia here draw some more cards hopefully get some zoroarks into play draw some more cards and go from there so there we go with the young Zorark. Great. Uh, Devoured Field makes no difference in this matchup. So I think I feel comfortable trading that away. Let's just do that. See if we can get another Zorark out here. Get another Zorark out here. All right. Actually, that weakness policy is pretty good too. So let's just drop that there. And we're going to go to Claw Slash Town. 110 damage. Perfect for a knockout on a Passimian. So that's great. 
Got ourselves an Ultra Ball so that we can get another Zorak next turn as well. And the deck is looking a little bit more stable uh, this game. You guys can see that we would have been able to target down whatever we wanted on my opponent's side of the field and pretty much blow it up. We would have gotten a turn to Dangerous Rogue GX. We don't really need to Dangerous Rogue anything in this deck, so... Are more or less fine but we do have to be wary of this power huddle right this makes the the Passimian much more scary so they ain't got it like that though so they're just going to team play this zarua here which i am fine with i am just going to keep mowing through uh this thing you know so long as i can uh, that is uh that is the plan and i think the idea is to get another like rock out and just do that so i'm going to attach a fighting here uh, i guess i technically you know, let's just, uh, let's Kikui, really. I don't really feel like discarding any of this stuff. That's all fine. That's good. And then Nest Ball, we'll get ourselves another Zerua and just kind of have these out just in case. We want to draw more cards with Zorark, but I will, uh, I'm comfortable trading away that Ultra Ball as well. And then we can kind of just continue going. I don't know why I traded away that Ultra Ball. The reason I wanted that Ultra Ball was to get myself a second like a rock. Should I need it? But that's fine. We'll just uh, we're just gonna go in this you know hard mode here without the guaranteed Lego rocks. Fine, you know I just uh, hey never punished. We're totally totally cool. All right, we're totally cool. So Zorark decks are tough to play, man. I mean you gotta you gotta figure out what do I trade away every turn? Do I have to trade? When is the correct time to trade? When is the correct time to sit? Uh, who to attack with? It's all you know. It's got its own flow to it for sure. That can be kind of tough to nail down if you are not experienced with the deck so still in the process of learning myself and i you know i mean i've been playing the game for like six years so you know i'll be the first to admit that zoric decks are not exactly the easiest in the world you can see that i uh i'm you know i'm glad i kept that lele in my hand uh, that's exactly what i wanted i could just like ace Arola that uh that zoric honestly you know it's fine we can like trade ace Arola, and then you know go in like that's that's kind of a cool play and then trade again that's uh not a problem at all so i think that i'm probably going to do that let's uh start off by trading away yeah i feel like i don't want that judge let's just trade away that judge honestly let's go judge get out of here we need to upgrade our internet here by the way y'all at home can probably see that uh that ugly little uh service thing coming in there i definitely don't want that so let's go in with the devoured field there let's also uh yes let's go get acerola so we're gonna go yeah we want a supporter card yeah we want that one acerola let's acerola this zorark out the active evolve a different one we got a clean zorua we're gonna slap down too so that's kind of cool so we'll do that get him out of here and we're gonna go claw slash again so that is cool cool stuff and then i can evolve one of these and continue trading. Uh, honestly, I do like the weakness policy. I'll probably, you know, keep that. And then let's just trade away uh, the multi switch. I just don't really feel like I'll probably oh, the lily. We could trade away the lily. We're not using that lily. Let's be honest. Okay. And we got choice band Diancy. That's cool. Okay. Um, good to go. Let's call slash knock this thing out as well. And uh, I guess we hope that my opponent doesn't, uh, you know. I don't really, I don't really, you know, think that it really matters at this point. If they knock me out with a Passimian, which would take a lot, they'd have to have a lot going on in that three card hand, then I can respond to it pretty easily with my own backup claw slash. I only have to take a couple more prizes here in order to win the game. They would really have to kind of, you know, get some momentum going here. And this is like one of the main reasons I'm not super fond of the Passimian deck. I think the Passimian was much stronger when it had Mew to rely on. The fact that you could go in with that Fates Collide Mew and just have I mean, more damage output. You could have more Passimian on the bench doing that. Uh, let's see, what are they? They Gladiant and then they passed with the Passimian active. This is an ultimate yikes uh, for me, dog. Yeah, that's just not going to be very good for them. So let's just trade away. I think the Diancy ultimately does not really matter this game. It probably should have maybe technically been the Rock Rough. But we are lagging bad, so that's uh, that's unfortunate. And we finally see a Great Ball. That's cool. Let's see if we can Great Ball. I kind of like that. Uh, let's see. We've got Coco, Tapu Lele. Sure, I'll grab a Tapu Lele. That sounds fun. 
And then I think that I do just ultra ball away the uh, two choice bands, and we're just gonna get ourselves our other Lycan Rock as well, just to kind of have, so we can feel confident that we've got a little bit of a better board state here. And I've only got 18 cards left in deck, honestly, at this point. Um, let's see. Actually, yeah, I think I wanna knock out the Coco. That throws like a bigger wrench in my opponent's plans because then they don't have free retreat. So I think that's actually better. And then uh, I can't attach another energy. So, I mean, honestly, at this point, there's really no point in putting energy anywhere. So we'll just claw slash. They're gonna scoop it up. They kind of know what's going on. They know they ain't got it like that. So Pissimian, we got there versus Pissimian with a Zorark like a rock deck. Let's play one more game, see if we can do a little bit better here, if we can go off on a positive note, uh, I don't really even know what you wanna play against as a Zorak deck. I feel like it's one of those decks that kinda just is evenly matched versus most things, like even-ish, you know, you don't feel super stoked on anything, but you're not super afraid of too much either, I guess. But you kinda feel like you can you can hang with, with most things. A bunch of my friends were playing Buzz Rock this weekend. I actually just got back from the League Cup and played Malamar and it went horribly. It was just really, really bad. Play against a Malamar Shrine deck. Started my Dawn Wings. Bad. Uh, lost my own v list. Bad. It was just all bad, right? Uh, it was it was rough. My opponent got a turn to, you know, v just, uh, you know, guns a blazing, just doing everything. I'm over there, you know, a prize two Malamar is one game, prize three Inke another game. It was just, uh, it was, it was brutal. So, Oh, good. Looks like we're playing against some sort of spread deck here. So that's just fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's that's just great. I feel like, I don't know, I, I personally, I think, uh, you know, after playing Malamar today and just like bombing with it, I think that I am back on my, uh, I'm back on my Vika Volt train. I think I'm just like, I love Vika Ray. It's a good deck. I think we just stay the course and keep playing Vika Ray for me. Like, honestly, I don't really see the point in dabbling in anything else uh, for me because everything seems pretty evenly matched. There's no real point in uh, you know diverging from the game plan here. I think that I just go in with this Cynthia turn one since my hand is so bad. Uh, that or I could one, two, three, four, five, six. I could Lily for two seems worse. So let's just Cynthia here. Hopefully we've got uh, you know some different things and we don't okay so uh can we just say that this deck plays like four nest ball four ultra ball and four great ball all right like just to give you all some perspective like this deck plays infinite consistency cards and we get nothing it's just oh just it's all bad i shouldn't have even attached that dce we listen guys all right we're just we're you know i feel like no 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 we're just gonna yeah we're gonna concede that one all right we're gonna roll one more they got it. Good game, sir. I just, no, too tilted. Let's go. One more. One more game. And we're going to win this one. I'm just, I'm going to do it. All right. We're going to win this game, this one. And uh, if not, if we don't win, uh, I'll do another giveaway. I still got to announce the winner of the giveaway on the Steelix video. I'm giving away one of those sweet GX counters. Uh, I'm giving away one of these. I only actually have a couple of these left, so they kind of sold out super quick. But I am giving away one of those to one of the awesome people who commented on the Steelix video. So I'm going to be contacting you uh, within the next 24 hours. So look out for that. But if I lose this game, I'll do another uh, giveaway. If I win, no giveaway, no giveaway. Then uh, so that's 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 the deal, all right. So let's see. We are playing against Vika Ray. Let's go. I believe in us. I think we could do it. Let's go. Just uh, turn one. I think we Lily thin our deck. Then we Great Ball and we go get ourselves. Uh, you know, we Lele. We get Lily and we go from there. So I'm feeling pretty good. I've always felt like that Zorark like an rock has a pretty decent. Uh, Vika Ray matchup, especially if we go first. So if we go first and we actually draw like halfway decent, I think we can do it. All right, we're gonna get ourselves another rock rough here. That's good. We're benching all these things that we probably shouldn't be benching. Like I don't wanna bench that, but that's fine. Cause then we only got room for one Zork, but you know what, who cares? It's all good. Let's Lily for six cards, six cards. All right, beautiful. And we don't have the Kakui. Uh, but I do have everything else, so I think I actually, no, I, um, hmm. 
See, if I were to have a Lycan Rock, I could knock out a Ray turn one. I could go Lycan Rock, uh, knock out. So I think I wait. Uh, I think I don't like play it yet just to see what we end up getting. Um, yeah, we're just gonna pass. Uh, because I could potentially go in, you guys see what I'm talking about. I've got the Devoured Field, I've got the Choice Band, I've got the DCE, uh, all I need is Kakui, and then I could uh, knock out a Ray. Now that's probably sketchy. You probably don't wanna do that. But honestly, like a turn uh, one knockout on a G or turn two knockout on a GX would be like super rad. If my opponent doesn't bench a Ray this turn, then I just uh, bench the Zerua, you know, and knock out the active Grubbin and go from there. And if my opponent does anything crazy like Tempest or anything like that, then I just judge them and I'm good to go. So let's uh let's see what we got going on here they get the delmise they are not putting a ray down they can smell fear uh i guess i can smell fear right they've got all three grubbins and a delmise oh the delmise is actually super good against lichen rock so that's kind of interesting i am just going to yes i'm going to bench this i'm going to do this and we are just going to knock out the active here so we will trade away i don't think that i'll be needing acerola a whole lot, honestly, and actually I definitely am not going to want this other Lele because I just have, I need to make room for Zoroarks, so we just got to have that for sure. We're going to attach that DCE there. I don't need to play Devoured Field or anything yet. I could judge my opponent. That seems bad. I think that we just let them sit on this hand. There's no way that they've got it. They ain't got it like that out of this hand. We're going to ride a speeding, and then we're going to wait for them to play like a big turn, and then we're going to try to, uh, we're going to try and disrupt their hand with Judge. Do have nest ball that's good for trading away if they do get a vehicle out odds are they're going to powerful spin in which case i've got acerola in hand that's why i kept that didn't trade it away we also want to be very careful with our lichen rocks our lichen rocks are going to be utilized only for like nuking rayquazas that's really what we got to focus on because my opponent can just trade very favorably with a delmise but at this point since i have taken that first prize I can kind of afford, uh, you know, they do have the Vigavol. It looks like they're probably going to Faulkner for it. So, you know, I can kind of afford to uh, sack a, uh, a Lycan Rock in order to take out a Ray and then have that Delmise take out my Lycan Rock and then me return and knock out the Delmise with my, uh, with my Zorark GX. Now, the thing is that, oh my gosh, I mean, this is going to be horrible because... I don't think I don't think they can win at all. What's going to happen is I'm going to acerola this thing up, uh, and then I'm going to slap that devoured field down and just knock it out, and it's going to be kind of ugly. Uh, they're just going for the Giga Drain though, so they are being a little bit conservative, not putting all three energy on. I do like that. Let's uh, trade first. I think that's the correct order of operations here. Yeah, we trade first. Let's trade away that nest ball. And then we Great Ball. And the reason we do that, it increases our odds of seeing a Pokemon since we see 10 cards off the top of the deck guaranteed. So we do that. We Great Ball. We see if we get another Pokemon. We don't really. Uh, I feel like I guess I get the Lele. There's no point in getting that Tapu Coco. So that's fine. Let's just uh, Acerola up that Zorark. We're going to throw this guy into the active position here. Bench Azerua, get him going. Devoured Field in the active position. DCE, uh, I don't know why I said active position. There's no active position here. We're, we're good to go. All right, let's trade away something else. I feel like I don't need three choice bands in this hand, so let's trade away one of these choice bands. That's fine. We probably only need two for this game once we start actually hitting into Rayquazas. We've got tons of uh yeah we've got tons of stuff in this hand none of it we really need so that's weird how that happens sometimes but let's just go ahead and ride us beating 130 we are definitely in the driver's seat this game uh, my opponent just has one of those weird vika volt hands where you kind of are slow to get started and that's the that's exactly what zork kind of preys on Zorak loves going first. Zorak loves getting a turn two knockout on something while you're still setting up, and that's kind of what this deck does best, especially with Lycan Rock just being able to target things down and just, uh, you know, kind of pick out whatever you want to knock out on your opponent's side with precision. Definitely 
one of the best qualities of this deck. That is a super dope grass energy. Definitely digging that. And the nice, uh, what is that, Call of Legends energies there too with the Ampharos on it. Super cool, super cool stuff. Now, honestly, Mr. Luffy BR, I'm not exactly sure where you go from here. All of your routes seem bad. I don't think that there's any coming back from this. Seems to be a lot of, there's just a lot of Delmise in this deck, honestly. There's just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, Let's see, if they go double Vikavolt, uh, I need Kakui actually to knock this thing out. So that's a little bit annoying. And they're going to let loose me. I'm actually down with that because this hand does not have a Zor. Actually, this hand is kind of horrible. I need a Kakui, so that's fine. Maybe we'll have a better chance of getting a Kakui off of this. We definitely do have Lycanroc. Uh, we also have Great Ball, so maybe higher chances of getting ourselves another uh, Zorark or something. That'd be good. Let's see what we got. I mean, they, uh, interestingly enough, they did uh, not strong charge before that let loose. They decided to let loose first. Oof, and they just got rid of an energy recycler. You hate to discard those with the uh, with that stormy winds. That's pretty much the worst thing that can happen. So we're wishing that we had a choice ban on the active now, you know, given this hand. Um, but uh, that's that's fine. That happens sometimes, so. We're gonna great ball. We're gonna trade great ball first, then then trade. I think because we want we're like looking for something specific. So since we are looking for a Kukui, uh, last time we wanted to increase our odds of getting a Zork. This turn, I think I, I don't know. I don't know what the correct play is. I feel like I great ball first, then I trade trade um, to increase our odds of getting Kukui. But then I increase my odds of getting a second Zork if I trade first. Um, so that's uh, an interesting kind of, oh, I can stop thinking. Great. Okay, so let's trade away that pal pad. I think that that's kind of not necessary. But now that I have both orcs, I am going to great ball first so that I can thin my deck and then hopefully increase my odds of getting Professor Kakui off of this. So I'm going to trade away probably the pal pad, honestly. Like we're not using that right now. So that's fine. We've got Guzma. And we've got ourselves a Devoured Field. I don't think that I actually need this Devoured Field. I don't think my opponent plays any way to counter it. That's just my suspicion. So can we get a Kakui? No. Big, fat, no. So that's fine. Uh, I will just... Yikes. Okay, I don't... Man. We definitely want to take a knockout. But we don't want... To, we definitely don't want to just hit into this Vika Volt. That seems really horrendous. Uh, I could attach my energy, Guzma, retreat, and knock something. Like, I could knock out that Marshadow, or I could knock out that Delmise. Both of those seem kind of bad. Um, oh, I could just Lycanroc. Yeah, let's just do that. We don't need a Guzma. We'll just Lycanroc something up. All right, let's Lycanroc. Let's bring up the Delmise, sure. Yeah, I actually don't want to get that... Um, I don't want to get that Marshadow into the discard pile because then my opponent could reuse it. So I'm going to do this. We're knocking out the Delmise so that my Lycanroc doesn't have as many things that can just hit it for weakness. So let's just ride his beating, knock this thing out, 130 damage, very good. Uh, game's looking a little bit scary now. We did get ourselves into a little bit of a weird, you know, a weird spot here. My opponent is going to be able to knock out the Zork. Uh, so long as I can respond and knock out this Rayquaza were good, but uh, I only have one Zora can play. So I only have one trade to make that happen, and it very well may not happen. Uh, that's definitely possible, you know, now that we are, ugh, now we're kind of in the final hours of the game here. We definitely need a choice band and a energy. Now, I didn't play my choice bands down. You never know, especially on PTCGO if your opponent is going to be playing Field Blower or anything like that. So you can't just go and slap your Choice Bands down just recklessly like that because if your opponent just plays one Field Blower, gets rid of both your Choice Bands, then you just lose, right? Because I need the Choice Band to be able to knock out the Rayquaza. Uh, so tight game here. Remember, if I lose this game, I'm doing a giveaway. I, don't, I need to figure out what I'm going to give away if I'm going to lose. Uh, I think that I just give away 
uh, one more of these GX counters, I think. All right, so if I lose, I'm giving away one more. I actually have like one left. It's just my one left. Uh, so I only have two, two left that are going for the giveaways. So potential giveaways, this is not a giveaway necessarily. If I win this game, we're not giving away. We're gonna save it for another video, in which case I make a similar bet or something like that. So yeah, uh, yeah, 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 let's see. We're gonna drag and break here, they're drag and breaking. We need uh, desperately an energy. They intelligently did not bench anything. We need energy choice band. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think we're going up with this thing. And we just have to do it. We only got one trade to make it happen. Major yikes. Okay, we've got the Kukui. Okay. Um, I think, I don't think that there's anything in my deck that I, I can't like search out. Yeah, oh, I can. Okay, so I can thin my deck by one with this Coco. I get to trade once and I get to Kukui. I promise you, oh, I got Diancy. We're good, we got the knockout, so long as I get an energy. I need an energy bad though. All right, so we thinned our deck. Let's uh, let's trade away the Zerua. We got there if we just can get an energy. Oh my gosh, you're telling me we have choice band but not the energy, we need the energy off of this. Oh, I'm gonna be so salty if we don't get it, come on. Oh my gosh, oh my goodness, this is horrible. I think we just lose now, like for sure. Oh my goodness, this is horrendous. Okay, I benched too many things that were not uh, that were not Zerua's. This is all bad. My opponent is definitely gonna be able to knock this out. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Oh boy, and then they just win, right? So I think we have to pass. Yikes from me, dog. That is not good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have Choice Ban actually in, in my hand now. We went all in on that. Like we benched Coco instead of Zerua off the Nest Ball. Like we did every, I can't even multi-switch because I it only moves to the active. I wish I could multi-switch off. Oh my gosh, they've got the Energy Recycler. Oh, just get, I just want to play Beak Ray, man. It's all I want to play. We're doing things like missing energy and all that. This is brutal. Just get me out of here. This is, uh, oh, this is the saddest timeline for sure. This is disastrous. Let's see. So I know that they have the energy. They have two Vika Volts out. This is just, uh, this is too much. I think at this point, they're definitely going to be able to pump enough energy into play. So long as they could just get, yep, all I needed was a backup Rayquaza. They could strong charge to that backup Rayquaza. Then they'll be able to knock out a Zorark, even if I get knockout this next turn. So I think that that whiff was just too brutal. We just needed one energy and we had it. Oh, that was that was horrible. Uh, we had a lot of energy in deck. We just had not seen a ton of our deck yet. Uh, you know, honestly, we didn't get a lot of Zoroarks out into play. We just uh, were trying our best there. But uh, honestly, this is this is how Vika Ray wins games, like for sure. You just get your opponent to kind of just whiff on just that one turn, and then you can just easily uh, take advantage of it and just and just win the game. So uh, if your opponent, you know, if they stumble once, game over, they're over 300 damage now. There's no winning that. So good game to my opponent. They just got it, and they just they just got me in that in that situation here. So. Let's just, uh, oh my gosh, we had what? One, two, three, four, five. We had five energy in deck. So sad, but we just did not have enough. Uh, we didn't have enough juice in the deck. I'm gonna see if I can take at least one more knockout here, just for pride's sake. But we are gonna be giving away. There's, yeah, too little, too late, my friends. Too little, too late. There is the DCE, and then we can uh, we can ride his beating here, but that's, uh, it's not gonna be enough, oh my goodness. And you can see we are not playing any of the techs for, uh, we prized an energy, Ugh. We're not playing any of the techs for Rayquaza, we don't have Dedenne in here or anything like that. We're just relying on getting the Kakui Choice Band, Devoured Field, right? But uh, yeah, my opponent's showing off, they got it. They got it like that, but anyway, so uh, bad for me, but good for you guys. I'm gonna be giving away uh, my final GX counter for this video. Uh, these are made of pure aluminum, super dope, so uh, they're just like la my last one. So make sure to comment on the video below. Let me know what you guys think about Zorark, like and rock for a chance to win. I'll contact you guys within the next week or so and uh, let the winner know 
who the winner was. I'll show off this list real quick, even though I'm not super stoked on it. It's all good. Uh, Zorak is definitely a deck that a lot of people know and love. It's just not my thing here. But this is the list that I was rocking right there, if you want to check that out. Uh, and it just, you know, feels a little underwhelming. It just doesn't do quite enough for me. I still feel like you just whiff things and, you know, games can just be ugly with Zorak. Unless you got Macargo in there. I've seen Zorak like a rock decks, you know, jam Macargo in there too. I just am not, I don't, I don't really know where you put it. Not a super big fan of that either. So anyways, Make sure to like the video, make sure to sub to the channel. If you have not already, comment on the video below for a chance to win one of these super dope aluminum GX counters. And thank you all for watching. Uh, peace.